I'm the nutritionist at Wildlife Reserve Singapore, so I make the diets for about 10,000 animals. The first thing I had to do when I first got uh, to working at WRS was to look at every single animal. And looking at 10,000 animals takes a while. So it actually took me up until now to change all of the diets of the animals just because it's just so much. The orangutans were eating a diet that was very high in fruits uh, and they were even getting some Milo, they were getting some tea, iced tea, they were getting a very high sugar diet. The reaction wasn't great at first because I removed everything that they loved, which was very sweet. So I removed the bread, I removed the, the chicken rice, I removed the fruits, and I replaced it with vegetables and beans and lovely healthy things. Normally a diet change for a primate can be up to two weeks, but we took four months to go with the orangutans because they're very smart. Generally, the smarter the animal, the slower you have to go. So the slowness used to be very, very hard to feed uh, in captivity worldwide. They all had dental diseases, they had facial abscesses. Uh, you had rescue centers filled with slowness that only had half a jaw because they had the jaw removed. Um, they're all obese or wasting, so really a terrible species to feed. But it turns out that when you look at what they eat in the wild, they like to eat gum. Not chewing gum, but actually tree gum. So that is the secret because it's made with uh, fermentable fibers. So it's actually able for them to feed their guts and then they're able to gain all the energy and everything that they need. Well, since we've changed the diet, our slowlerses have had babies every year, which is uh, definitely proof of how successful the diet is. They don't have any obesity or, or thinness. Their body weight is constant, it doesn't vary. They don't have any more digestive issues. They don't have any more dental issues either because the gum we think is quite good for their teeth. It helps to kind of brush their teeth in a way. And their fur is much thicker and good quality as well. Hurry, gum. Hurry, gum good. Ooh, do my gum. Come here. And one thing that's very unique to zoos is old animals. We take very good care of our animals so they live a long time. This doesn't generally happen in the wild. And this also means that it's not really known or not really well studied how to take care of these old animals, specifically how to feed old animals. So we currently have one Indian rhino who is 40 years old and in the wild they live between 45 to 50. So this is definitely geriatric. Uh, and we give them a special mix of supplements that aim to help with their joints and help with their skin quality as well. So all of these things help to affect different systems, different organs, uh, just to make it easier for them to age gracefully. When I see animals thriving because of their new diets, it makes me feel like my mission is somewhat accomplished. It's a lot of work and it's really hopeful for me because it makes me feel like I'm actually doing something and I'm successful and it's, it's worth it and I did this for a reason.